In 2018, 5G was released globally, but traditional 2G, 3G, and 4G will remain the mainstream delivery models for the immediate future. For mature scenarios, reducing costs and improving efficiency are a top priority for all level delivery organizations. The GTS Engineering Lab has teamed up with R&D and external institutions of all levels to optimize products and work procedures. The field work period has now been reduced from 7.5 hours to 4 hours for a standard 4G wireless site, indicating that further efficiency improvements can be made. This video will clarify how a four-member team can complete site installation within four hours. This trial site is an outdoor greenfield site with a 15-meter tall tower and six RRUs in three sectors. A pole has been installed on the tower and the indoor cabinets have been installed with DCDUs and BBUs waiting to be installed. Site installation includes 18 activities in total, including pre-assembly, antenna and RRU hoisting, BBU installation, and cable routing and connection. Of these, pre-assembly is completed in the warehouse, while other activities are to be performed on site. Pre-assembly substantially shortens the field work period, especially the assembly time for equipment on the tower, reducing the installation difficulty and EHS risks as well. Huawei personnel identify the site that requires pre-assembly based on the pre-assembly checklist, sort the equipment and auxiliary materials for the site at the warehouse and deliver them to the site. Two persons move the equipment jointly and place it on the assembly platform. Attach color rings to the jumper. Connect the jumper and waterproof it with a cold shrink sleeve. Compared with the OnePlus 3 Plus 3 waterproof solution, using cold shrink sleeves can improve efficiency by over 80% without any compromise on quality. Install the antenna support. Prepare a ground cable and connect it to the RRU. Label the jumper. Prepare connectors for the power cable and attach color rings. After pre-assembly is completed, check the pre-assembled parts, move the equipment to the designated vehicle, and get ready to start off. Before departure, Huawei personnel ensure that the equipment and auxiliary materials, as well as operation documents, are complete. Site access permits have been obtained, tools and PPE comply with relevant rules, and that the vehicle is in good condition. Upon arrival at the site, construction personnel cordon the site and erect safety signs. Operators wear PPE as required. Tower workers are equipped with safety ropes and check such devices for each other. As construction team leader, enable the facial recognition function of ISDP Mobile for clock-in. Perform EHS self-check before any operations and carry out the EHS risk assessment. After the safety signs are erected, move the equipment to the designated site for installation. Place tools in an area within easy reach of operators. As construction team leader, use ISDP Mobile to trigger site sign. After the aforementioned preparations are complete, tower workers check the environment on the tower and place the required operation tools into their tool packages. Climb the tower with the help of a double hook safety belt. Check the stability and safety of the tower body and pole. Secure the pulley to an appropriate position on the pole. Ground personnel prepare for the hoisting of SIPRI cables and power cables as tower workers are checking the tower. Place the SIPRI cables and power cables in an open area to avoid cable crossing, intertwining, or the risk of them being trampled on. Protect the connectors of SIPRI cables and power cables. Bind and fix them with lifting ropes by sector. Steadily lift the SIPRI cables and power cables. Avoid cables crossing or becoming intertwined with tower components during this process. After the cables arrive at the top of the tower, Remove the auxiliary materials and use cable ties to temporarily secure the cables to a position that is convenient to connect them to the equipment. After cables are hoisted, 
Prepare for the hoisting of antennas and RRUs. Bind the antenna with a lifting rope. One person is required for lifting and another person for traction. When an AAU or other heavy equipment is hoisted, movable pulleys are used to prevent such equipment from falling. After receiving the antenna, tower workers secure the antenna to the pole from top to bottom. After the antenna is installed, start to hoist two RRUs for this sector. After the antenna and RRUs of the first sector are installed, complete installation in the second and third sectors following the same procedures. Connect RRU cables after all antennas and RRUs are installed. Connect to jumpers and waterproof connectors. Compared with the OnePlus 3 Plus 3 waterproof solution, it is more efficient to use cold shrink sleeves to work on the tower. Connect the ground cables and power cables, route the cables downwards, and securely bind redundant cables to appropriate positions. After the work on the tower is complete, use Smart QC to check equipment and take photos as proof. Remove the hoisting pulley from the tower. Secure the cables as tower workers descend the tower. As required by new installation standards, cable fixing clips should be deployed every two meters. Thus, both auxiliary material consumption and operation workload are dramatically reduced. Use a ratchet wrench to tighten nuts as this is more efficient. Finally, ground the power cables according to relevant specifications. Adopt the traditional 1 plus 3 plus 3 solution for waterproofing. The installation of the entire antenna system is now complete. As tower workers are working on the tower, ground personnel start to install indoor equipment. Note, Huawei's wireless full kit cabinets and network power infrastructure TP series do not require extra grounding. BUs and DCDUs are grounded through rack mounting ears and mounting bars. First, install a DCDU. Next, install a BBU and secure it. For maximum efficiency, use an electric screwdriver to secure boards. Connect the cabinet power cable to the DCDU and fasten the connectors. Bind the power cable to the side of the cabinet using cable ties. Straighten the CIPRI cables connected to the cabinet. Insert CIPRI cables into the corresponding optical modules according to the color rings. Bind the CIPRI cable to the side of the cabinet using cable ties. Ensure that the bending radius of CIPRI cables comply with relevant standards. After the cables are connected and secured, attach labels to the cables, including the main power cable, the ground cable, the RRU power cable and the CIPRI cable. Double check that the cable connections and labels are correct and that labels of the same type are in the same direction. After all cables are connected, neatly route the cables outside the cabinet and bind them to the cable ladder using cable ties. Cable fixing clips are not mandatory for indoor and outdoor horizontal cable ladders. After the indoor equipment is installed, use Smart QC to check and take photos as proof. Using structured QC plans reduces the data collection workload and improves approval efficiency through online reviewing. Use ISDP Mobile to perform Site Verify. For maximum efficiency, link QC with Site Verify to reduce the workload. Finally, clean up the site and put away tools, protective belts, safety signs, fire extinguishers, and other devices. Ensure that no equipment or garbage is left on site. Notify the NOC and confirm the construction personnel can leave the site. Before leaving the site, enable the facial recognition function of ISDP Mobile again to clock out. This video has given an overview of field works in a typical 4G new build scenario taking four hours in total. Efficient procedures, technologies and tools such as pre-assembly, waterproofing with cold shrink sleeves, new type color rings, structured QC plans, multi-cable hoisting, 
and the linking of QC and Site Verify are adopted at this site, dramatically reducing the field work period.